Hey, number six and seven. Let's just do these two word problems together. Let's crank them. All right, so a plane is heading due south with an airspeed of 298 miles per hour. Let me just draw my little... Uh, Always good to draw these things. Yes. Line it up perfect. Oh, boy. I hope you OCD kids don't notice how tilted that first line is. <laughs> <Do> hush. <laughs> okay, so the airplane is due south, so that's along this line, due south, um, at 298 miles per hour. That's a magnitude. That is a magnitude. We're going to need that. And the due south is telling us our direction, um, which we could figure out what that direction angle is just by coming around like this and saying, ta-da, that's 270. 3 pi over 2. Or 3 pi over 2, either way. So our plane, to get the component form of that, which we'll need, we would do 298 cosine 270 or 3 pi over 2, comma 298 sine. 270. And since we're going due south, there should be no X component issue here. This should right. be a zero. You could actually do this without even looking at what I just wrote down by saying, well, it doesn't go left or right, so the X component is zero. It just goes down, and down is negative, so that's negative 298. That's for the plane. Now let's do the wind. Let's do. Okay. So the wind is blowing from a direction of 51 degrees These at are, 18 miles per hour. This is a bearing. Just assume they're talking about bearings in the plane problem. Okay. Okay? Right? Always. In the plane problem, they are talking about bearings. Right. This right here, they're telling us is 51 degrees, but the issue is that it is from 51 yeah, it's, degrees. Yeah, it's blowing that direction yes. towards the origin from that way. Yeah, so actually, if you wanted to put it in standard form, it'd be this angle going this direction. Right. And so vertical angles means that this is 51 degrees. And that means that if we want to find the angle to get around to here, we need we, to we do... We got to go with that whole big beastie guy. Right, which is 270 minus 51. Or 180 plus 51. That's not the same thing. What? This is 51. We're 51 short of 270. Yeah, so 270 minus 51. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I said. 219. 219. So at 18 miles per hour, cosine 219, 18, oh, sine. Looks like I'm going to have to punch these in. That's not on our unit circle. No, because it ends in 9. 18, cosine 219. I get negative 13.989. Okay. Oh, shucks. Did you type something wrong? I did. Shh, don't tell anybody. Okay. I won't tell I haven't anybody. made a mistake in years. I don't want the word to get out. Okay. Negative 11.328 for cosine. You already have it. <laughs> Gee willikers. All right. So what we're doing is we're trying to take into the account that the wind affects the plane. Right, it's blowing the plane in that direction. Right, so what we need to do is add the plane and the wind together, like literally add them together. Take okay. the x values and add them together. Let's do that. Okay. I can do the first one without a calculator. Okay. Wait, you've already written it. Sorry, it's, it just comes naturally. Jeez. Negative 298 plus negative 11.328. Yeah. I know it's negative. 309 point, what? Uh, I added, oh, I subtracted, shoot, I thought I added. Okay, hold on, I got it. Negative three, 309.328. That's right. You already wrote it down. What it asks us for in the problem is Candy the Crush. bearing, which is the angle starting from north. So think about this, uh, this vector right here that we got. Our resultant vector is a vector in the fourth quadrant and so if we want the bearing, we are trying to figure out the angle from north to right here. To do that, we need to use inverse tangent of y over x. In degree mode. In degree mode, right? Because we're trying to find, bearings are in degrees, not radians. If you do inverse tangent of that, you get 87.411. And you didn't have mean to for that remember, one either, did you? No, it's written right there on the paper where I did it this morning. 
you guys have to remember, like I don't know how many times we have to say this, when you do inverse tangent, it tells you the reference angle and then you have to do more work to get what your angle is. In this case, we want a bearing. So you would look at this and say, okay, this is that quadrant's 90, this one's 180, this one's 270 from where we're starting at, at north. So that means that if 270 is right here, I need to do 270 minus 87.411. The 411? Yeah, the, that's the 411. So 182.589 is our answer. 182.589 degrees. All right, are you going to help me out with the next one, Mr. Hazelwood? Or are you just... I feel like you already had that one. Under control. Can I help you on this one, though? I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, go for okay, it. Okay, all right. So a force of... Oh, geez, this one looks hard. A force of 90 pounds acts on an object at an angle of 55 degrees. Do you think that's a normal angle or a bearing? I, I feel like that's probably a normal angle since they didn't... We're not flying an airplane We're not here. flying an airplane or driving a boat. Right. So... I'm going to go with normal angle of 55 degrees. A second force of 100 pounds uh, acts on the object at an angle of minus 60 degrees. Find the direction and the magnitude of the resultant force. Um, I'm pretty much going to go out on a limb and say this is really similar to the one we just did. Although... I think it's actually a ton easier. It's And because, it's written way different. Yeah. It, it's actually... But we've a, got a magnitude for both of these already. Yep, this one's 90 pounds and it's a direction of 55. What's great about this problem is you don't actually have to mess with changing the angles, no. which I personally yeah, am a it's fan just, of. Yeah, it's just, you just, you got this stuff. Like this really is 55 degrees. This really is negative, negative 60. 60. To figure out. You just punch them right in. You just, you just punch them in. So this Did you one, already punch these in too? Why don't you look at the paper that's in front of you? So you, you didn't need me to get my calculator earlier I, today? I've only done the first page of the review. <laughs> so... Okay. It's really awkward. Is this thing on? I Can hope they... you didn't just, like, kill their <laughs> ears by doing that. So uh, for the purple vector here, we need to do 90 cosine 55, 90 sine. I think I put 155, but that's just... Yeah, that should be a, just a 55, yeah. Okay, and then for the blue vector, we do 100 Bluesy -woozy. cosine negative 60 and 100 sine negative 60. By the way, um, the 60 is on your circle card, but since the 55 isn't, we you, have get a decimal. you have permission to yeah. use decimals on this one. So, um, Add them together. when I punch those and into punch my calculator, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I get... Um, 101, no. 51.622. <laughs> I get 51.622, and I get 73.724. 73.6. 724. 74. Yep. And then on the other one, I get 50. 50? 50. 50 cents? No. And negative 86.603. Negative 86.603. And if you found it on the unit circle, you would get negative 50 square roots of 3. But like right. we said, since they, we know we're going to end up with decimals, we might as well just get decimals yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, and that's okay. Now we're going to add those two guys together All because right. we want to know where we end up. Okay, so the first one's easy, 101.622, right? So what's the second one? 73.724 plus negative 86.623. Uh, you got negative 12.879, so I hope you did good math there. Negative 12.879. And then so that's that's our uh, that's our actual vector. Yeah, that's our component. Form. Yeah, that's our component form. We want the direction and magnitude, so we so, have to basically undo what we did earlier. Oh, son of a gosh vector. darn! That doesn't even make sense. What you just said, son of a gosh darn. Yeah, that doesn't okay. make sense. Well, it kept me from saying like other a, stuff. Yeah, you like know. what? I'm just kidding. You know, I'm just like kidding. I can't believe you're whispering that in my ear. Okay. But I didn't say that. I said, holy, holy gosh darn. Okay. We're squaring and adding and then square rooting and we get for the magnitude 102.435. And that's in pounds. L Elbs. I like to make my L's curly so they don't look like ones. That's a good plan. That's a very good plan indeed. And, and then we're just going to arc Tanaruski this guy uh, because you know the two sides. So... 
y side over x side arc tangent in degree form, I might add, degree form. Uh -huh. And you're going to wind up with negative 7.223. And I'm just going to... You're running out of room. Yeah, I'm going to write that up here. Now, let's ask ourselves, is that actually the angle that we want? Well, you know, we could use that angle. I mean, that's not a bad number. Right. Generally, in bearings, we don't use negatives, which no. is why we would never want to have a negative I'm flying bearing. at negative 32 yeah. degrees. Um, but if... If we're for one thing, they gave us a negative angle, right? right? I mean, negative sixty in negative out negative. Yeah, and and also think about where this resultant vector is. This resultant vector is like right here ish, and that is negative seven point two two three. Like we don't need to change it or anything. Right. That is our that actual is what it is. Direction angle. Yeah. All right. Cool. I agree.